In this video, I explain the modeling process for panel vector error correction model. So, when do we run panel VECM? And the answer is when dealing with uh, variables that are non-stationary at level, but stationary at first difference. In other words, the variables have to be integrated of first order, or I1. And additionally, the variables must be co-integrated. And so to proceed, the first thing to do would be to perform a unit root test to determine that the variables are I1. And secondly, to perform co-integration tests to confirm that the variables are indeed co-integrated. And thirdly, to then proceed and run panel VECM in order to examine the short run and long run dynamics. And if you want to also perform wall tests to determine Granger causality. And so to go ahead with this task, we have a panel data of 13 countries, each with 20 years of annual data. And we're going to use these two variables right here, tourism receipts and market capitalization, both of which are integrated of first order and also co-integrated, as you can see right here on eViews. So here are the variables TR and MCAP. If I right-click on any of them and open as a group, we have it right here. Here's the whole panel data set. And so we can go to view and co-integration test and panel co-integration test. And I'm going to leave it, uh, leave test type to be uh, Pedroni and choose the second uh, option right here for the trend specification and automatic uh, selection. And go ahead and click OK. And here we are. So there are 11 statistics to examine, as you can see right here and of which eight of them reject the null hypothesis of no co-integration. And that's it right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight of these say that these two variables are co-integrated. So with that, we can proceed and run panel VECM. And this is pursuance to the 1987 study by Engel and Granger in which they proposed a two-step technique for modeling co-integrated I1 time series. In the first step, we estimate the long-run model that you see right here between the variables and then obtain the residuals. The lagged residuals equation is called co-integrating equation, as you can see right here. The word co-integration, by the way, means long run. In the second step, we add the lagged residuals to the short run terms in blue right here to obtain the vector error correction model. The lagged residuals, which is this ECT error correction term, contains information in effect about the long term relationship and importantly, the adjustment process to long run equilibrium. The coefficient of the error correction term, which is this phi right here, measures the speed of adjustment to long run equilibrium. And so let's go ahead and show how that works out right here on eViews. So we're going to go to Quick, Estimate VAR, and check Vector Error Correction. Be sure to type your lead variable first and then the other variables. Here, this is a, two, a bivariate model. So my uh, maximum lag interval right here, uh, lag length right here is two. I'm going to leave it at that. And then uh, for co-integration, I'm going to leave uh, the uh, trend specification as is and OK. So here's our output. There are two parts to this output. The co-integrate, the co-integrating equation right here and the error correction model right here. The co-integrating equation is, going back here, this right here. And the second component, error correction model right here, is the main model that we're estimating this guy right here. So we're going to look at the coefficients of the short run component and the long run components. This, of course, is the more important because you do want to know if, in fact, we have long run causality. And that's going to be this term right here. So right here in the VECM model, we have two components again. We have the long run components, which refers to the co-integrating equation, 
and the short run component, the terms with D or differences. So right here in the co-integrating equation, we see the coefficients, which is the speed of adjustment, the standard error, and the T statistic. So is this significant? I'll speak to it shortly. The second is the long, the short run component, and in particular, we want to look at the statistical significance of the coefficients associated with the explanatory variable m cap to see if, in fact, they are significant, so as to infer short run causality. So to know if these variables are significant, I'm going to go to proc, make system, order by variable and estimate so I can see the p-values of the coefficients. Now when you have this output, we are interested of coefficients up to this point right here. So that's going to be coefficients up to the sixth one, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The rest of them refer to this one that we haven't estimated. So we're going to be looking at these guys right here, of which we're going to start with this the co-integrating equation. And here's the coefficient we saw before, which is the speed of adjustment. It needs to fulfill two attributes. First, it needs to be negative, which it is. Secondly, it needs to be statistically significant, which it is, at any conventional level. So there are two pieces of vital information we can get out of this. First is we can say that any disequilibrium in the short run is that about 6.4% of that is corrected every period. And secondly, because this is statistically significant, we can say that MCAP Granger causes tourism in the long run. Now then, in the short run, we look at the coefficients for MCAP, which are this and this jointly. So that's going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4th and 5th coefficients, these two guys right here. So we, we need to test them jointly by going to View, Coefficient Diagnostics, Wall Test, and it's going to be C4 equal C5 equal 0. And as you can see, at any conventional level, we reject the null hypothesis of no short-run Granger causality in favor of the alternative that there is short-run Granger causality, specifically that MCAP Granger causes tourism in the short run. And so that's about it, but we can also ex uh, examine if we have reverse causality. And for that, we're going to go to Quick, Estimate VAR, vector error correction and this time MCAP is going to be the target variable because we want to see if TR Granger causes it. So everything else is as before. Alright, so just click OK. And here we go. So you can see quite clearly this is again the co-integrating equation but in particular this is the speed of adjustment which as you can see is neither negative nor statistically significant we're going to prove that shortly so by going to proc make system order by variable and estimate okay right here so this is it right here so this is not negative and it's not statistically significant. So we can say that tourism does not grant a cause MCAP in the long run. And also we can check out the short run terms. And that's again going to be f the fourth and the fifth coefficients. So that's it right here. And if you want to be absolutely sure, you can go to view coefficient diagnostics and wall test and you can go ahead and do C4 equals C5 equals 0 and you can see that the null hypothesis that tourism does not grant a cause MCAP is not rejected and so we neither have evidence of long-run causality nor short-run causality running from tourism 
to MCAP. So what we have in this analysis is a one directional causality, both in the short and long runs, running from MCAP to tourism. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's keep learning.